Hey, Freedom Christian Centre, Pastor Jason and Pastor Liz, we love you. Part of our uh, global family, you know, it's so amazing to have people that you have uh, uh, spirit-to-spirit connections with. And we just want to tell you how much I, I love you and I appreciate you. Some of the greatest people on the planet and some of the greatest leaders there. Um, Pastor Jason and Pastor Liz are amazing leaders. And uh, those who are part of Freedom Christian Center are so blessed to be a part of uh, what an amazing church God is raising up for this time, this season, this hour. I, I, uh, I've been thinking about what to share with you uh, today. And Philippians 4, 19 is an amazing scripture. And it says this, and my God, I love that. It says, and my God doesn't say he's a distant God. It says he's a personal God. Shall, not may, not could, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. So God is saying he, he's got so much resource that supply is never an issue. That word supply means to fill up, to furnish, to supply liberally. That word need is a lack or necessity or business. So God is saying, I'm going to look after your business. I'm going to look after your home. I'm going to look after your family. I'm going to, because why? He's our God. He's a personal God and He has the supply. And when I was praying, this thought kept coming back to me, supernatural supply. I believe um, Freedom Christian Center that you are stepping into a season and already have stepped in to a season of supernatural supply. And as I begin to think about this supernatural supply, uh, supply, you think about supply in the natural, it comes through a piping system or a supply chain. For example, you're hearing my voice now. Somebody's recording it. Now, and then they'll download it uh, or upload it and you'll download it there. You'll have your TVs turn on and then the internet will beam that into your home. Why? Because there's a supply chain or a supply line. And so supply comes through a system or a chain or a supply chain or a, or a piping system. And if you think about, we're saying, my God shall supply, well, your God, our God, shall supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. That means He has a supply system. God has a supply system. And where does the system start? Where does the supply begin? In Revelation 22, it talks about the river of God in verse 1. And it says, And He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from where? the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the middle of His streets on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each fruit yielding uh, its fruit every month. So there wasn't a month without fruitfulness. And the leaves on the tree were for the healing of the nations. The leaves on the tree were for the healing of the nations. So this supply comes from or originates at or our supply chain or our supply system originates at the throne room of God. God is what we depend upon. You know, there's this um, old uh, nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. You all know it, right? Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. In other words... The king's horses and the king's men were institutions that were set up that couldn't bring healing, that couldn't bring breakthrough. You know God's institution that He has set up to be a a vehicle or a vessel or a a place of supply to our community, whether it's in salvation, whether it's in healing, whether it's in love, whether it's in joy, whether it's in peace. The supply uh, chain and the supply line doesn't come through the institutions of the government or other institutions. It's the church. Where goes the church goes culture. Where goes the church goes society. And so we are uh, people that we get our supply 
from the throne room of God, not from anyone else. We don't, we, you know, we don't put our dependence on anyone else because those things will come and go. But God's supply does not cease. So our supply line originates at the throne room of grace. So if you think about a pipe and this pipe is a supply chain or a supply line, Sometimes pipes get clogged and stuff builds up, junk builds up. And you know what, what my encouragement and what I love about the church there is you're constantly clearing the pipelines of your life, the junk out of your life. Why? Because you want to see supply go to other places. You think about your heart. Your heart pumps blood blood to the whole rest of your body. But if any of your arteries are blocked, if any of the arteries are are clogged with something, what happens is the rest of the body doesn't get fed like it should. So my encouragement to you today is if there's anything in your life that is blocking the supply of God, um, you know, God doesn't um, not keep pouring out on our lives but sometimes we have a blockage to receive from Him. And then sometimes we have a blockage to release what He has given us to other people. So you think about where it comes to your heart and your arteries. What do they say? They say, have the right diet. What are you eating today? I'm not talking about physical food. I'm talking about what are you feeding your spirit with? Are you feeding your spirit with the news? Are you feeding your spirit with facts? Or you're feeding your spirit with the Word of God? Are you feeding your spirit uh, with what God says about a situation? You know, the Bible says um, that the only thing that that will remain is the Word of God. So heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's Word will remain. What does that mean? Is what are you listening to? What's your spiritual diet? What worship are you listening to? What music are you putting into your life? You see, if you want to be a person that God uses greatly, you've got to make sure the pipes, the arteries, the supply places of your life are getting the right nutrients, the right food. And the second thing is that what they do with clogged hearts is they, they clear it. They clear the arteries. They clear the blockages. I want to encourage you right now, as you're listening to my voice, as the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you, as the Holy Spirit begins to minister to you, is there any blockage in your life that is stopping you to receive from God and stopping you from releasing the blessing of God? The blessing, the supply comes from the throne room of grace. And it's our pipes, our ability to receive, our ability to flow is what determines supply down the supply chain. The next next thing we see in Philippians 4 and verse 4 to 6, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. So you think, yeah, okay, good, I'm going to rejoice. What is rejoice? Rejoy. Keep getting your life filled with joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And he repeats it. And again, I say rejoice. And then it says, Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. And watch this word. Supplication or supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. In other words, I bring my requests for supply, my supplication, my supplication. I bring my requests to the throne room of grace. The Bible says, enter into the throne room of grace boldly. I enter in through the throne room to the throne room of grace with my supply requests for my needs and the needs of others. And as I come and bring my supplication, I come with a posture. I come with a posture of thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. So supply, my supplication, how I get it is not through complaining, 
not through uh, uh, being angry, not through saying, well, life's not fair. No, how I get, uh, how I receive the supply from heaven as I bring my supplication, my supply application, I come with thanksgiving. And so as I thank God for His supply, faith is enacted in my life. And now I'm ready to receive what God has for my life. So I bring my supplication with thanks. The Bible says, enter His gates with what? Thanksgiving. Enter His courts with praise. The Lord's Prayer doesn't start with my problem or my complaint here on earth. The Lord's Prayer starts with my Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be Your name. What am I doing? I'm coming and exalting Him and magnifying Him, magnifying Him. My thanksgiving and I come with supplication, with thanksgiving, I'm magnifying His ability to provide for me, to be be a blessing to me so I can be a blessing to others. And I come with thanksgiving. I remember my mother um, in Papua New Guinea was very sick. And one night she was in this hospital the little cottage next to the hospital. Papua New Guinea is pretty primitive. It's a third world country. And she was sick with hepatitis. And in the middle of the night, she woke up to some noise. She thought there were some rats in the roof and she put her flashlight on where the noise was and she saw there was a snake there. And at that moment, at that moment, she screamed, but she had a nervous breakdown. She uh, went into heavy depression. She, she just uh, was in a bad way. So we had to leave Papua New Guinea. I was two years of age and, and my dad came back and he was mowing lawns for a job and then eventually got offered a church in Adelaide, Australia. And we went as a family there, but my mother was still, she was in hospital when we left uh, Papua New Guinea. And in fact, my dad would hear her screaming as he came. It was a a psychiatric hospital that she was in. She was so depressed. She eventually got um, released to go home. She was doing a lot better. And then we went to Adelaide to take over this church, but she had this heavy depression. And uh, one day she had everyone pray for her. She had, you know, things, every spiritual thing that she knew. She knew the Word of God. My mum was a strong woman, she, but she had a nervous breakdown. And one day she was reading this book, From Prison to Praise. And she read this line, In all things, give thanks. And the Holy Spirit whispered to her and He said, Thank me in all things. She said, How can I thank you for this situation? He said, well, come and give thanks to God. Say, God, I don't understand what's going on, but I praise You because You're good. She'd be so depressed in the morning. She'd wake up heavy and she'd get out of her bed. And, and, and it, was a, it was a sacrifice of praise, actually. And she'd get up and say, God, I thank You. I don't know what's going on in my life, but You're good. You're awesome. And I praise You and I magnify You and I glorify You. I thank You. You love me. I thank You. And she'd do this for about 10 minutes and it would be heavy, it'd be hard work, but then all of a sudden the heaviness would lift because God gives you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. She'd go through the day, she was completely fine. Next day, depression, heaviness is back. So she'd get up again at hard work at the start. Oh God, I I thought I fixed it yesterday, but I'm feeling down again today, but I don't focus on that. I focus on You. You're a good God. You're a powerful God. You're a magnificent God. I thank You. You are so good. Heaviness would lift. And for the next 18 months, this is how her life was. Then in a meeting, there's a man from California who worked with Catherine Kuhlman, was in Adelaide and... uh, the Holy Spirit was moving. He said, the Holy Spirit here is here. Catch. You know, it's Pentecost Sunday that we're celebrating. Uh, and so there she was and 2,000 people and the power of God hit the whole place. The whole place fell under the power of God. My mother was at the bottom of the pile. She got up and she was so full of the Spirit 
She got on the, in her car to drive home and she felt like, oh, I hope I don't get pulled over by the police because I'm like drunk. <laughs> For the next three days, she shook under the power of God. Then she went to see the preacher off at the airport because my dad was the pastor who brought the preacher in. And he, knowing nothing, he said, you had a situation with a snake and you're healed, you're free. Never again did my mother have that heaviness come on her. From that, that moment on, she was completely free. But what happened over those 18 months is she learned to praise. So every battle, every time she needed the supply line of heaven to be released and opened, she'd just begin to praise. When I was going through challenges as a teenager, my brother was going through challenges. I'd hear her say, oh God, I praise you for my boys. I thank you, you're gonna use them greatly. I give you glory and I give you honour. I thank you, Father. You know, one of the things church that Planet Shakers is known for is its praise. It's praise because wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where did that start? It started with a mother who was depressed, heavy, in a psychiatric hospital, but learned to be thankful and release the supply of heaven. So thankful prayers is what accesses the supply. And watch this, God in Ephesians chapter 4, 16 says, For whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective work by which every part does its share, causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. In other words, our joinings together, that God has joined us together, are, are supply chains. You bring your faith, I bring my faith. We bring uh, my talent, you bring your talent, other people bring their talent, and we come together as a body, we're joined together, and each join supplies. But the problem is, many people have dislocated themselves instead of living located in the body, instead of being accountable in the body, instead of coming into agreement in the body, they've dislocated themselves and said, well, I've been hurt, I've had this happen, I've had that happen in my life. And they become dislocated and they don't, they stop the supply chain of blessing through their life. And I'm encouraging you, if you've been dislocated, come back into being located. Let every joint supplies. God has made His supply, supply chain work as He is the head and we are the body. And as we work together, we see His kingdom come on earth. But this is really what I want to share with you, Freedom Christian Centre. This is what I want to share with you. God, this is what I feel prophetically. He wants to increase the size of the pipelines so that acceleration can flow. He wants to, you see, if the pipelines are too small, it, 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 it brings a small blessing. But if the pipelines are bigger, it releases a greater uh, a blessing. In Isaiah 54, it says, O sing, O barren, you have, who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you have not laboured with a child for more of the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Here, here it is. Enlarge, 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 enlarge the place of your tent. In other words, increase the pipes, increase the ability for more. And see, God is going to put a challenge on us, uh, uh, all of us as the body of Christ, to increase, not decrease at this time, not go into isolation and hibernation, but God wants to increase. He wants you to act in faith like you've never acted in faith before. He wants you to sow like you've never sown before. He wants a, a Freedom Christian Centre to see more locations so more people can encounter God. He wants to see more, more facilities, more blessing, more small groups, groups, more people train. Why? Because you're increasing, you're increasing the pipes. Remember, our supply comes through the throne room of grace. 
we clean the junk out. We come with thankfulness and thanksgiving. We get alongside each other and, and, and we have the supply, each joint supplies. But this is, I really feel this strongly. He wants to increase the size of the pipes for Freedom Christian Centre. There are things that God's gonna tell you to do to step out in faith, both individually and corporately. And it's all about increasing the ability to release blessing through you to other people. It's all about increasing the place of His grace to be reached through the society. You know, it's amazing what you've done on Zoom and, and amazing what happens in, in your small groups and, and all that and, and in, your, in your corporate gatherings. But God is saying in all of it, increase, 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 increase. Get bigger buildings, get bigger places, get bigger so that you can see more grace. Where, where the world is shutting down and going into, into hibernation or isolation, God's saying, now come on church, it's, it's time to live in revelation. It's time to live in the things of God. And listen what it says. Lengthen your cords. Well, actually, let's go back to enlarge the place of a tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. inhabited. Wow, wow, wow. God is saying, Freedom Christian Center, as you enlarge the place of your tent, as you begin to get stretched and the places of your dwellings get enlarged and you don't spare and you lengthen your cords and you strengthen your stakes, that you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. And then He says, Do not fear, for you shall not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you... For you will not forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is His name. He is called the God of the whole earth. And lastly, Freedom Christian Centre, expansion isn't always easy, but the fruit of it is exponential. It's not always easy to take steps of faith. It's not always easy to enlarge a place and be stretched. It's not always easy, but the result is, the fruit of it is, it's exponential. You won't even be able to put into words what has actually happened. Ephesians 3, 20 says this in the Amplified Version. You'll see a different version on the screen. It says, now to Him who is able to do super abundantly, far over and above all you dare ask or think, infinitely, Pastor Jason, infinitely, infinitely beyond your highest prayers, thoughts, hopes or dreams. God is saying, as you stretch, as you enlarge the place of your dwelling, as you get your pipelines bigger, God is going to do infinitely beyond your highest thoughts, prayers, hopes or dreams. And verse 21 tells us why. To Him be the glory in Freedom Christian Centre. To Him be the glory in Pastor Jason and Pastor Liz's life. In Him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. God has a supernatural supply. It originates from the throne of grace. This supply, you need to get rid of the junk. We're going to deal with that in a moment. This supply comes through thankful access, supplication. This supply is when we work together and each joint supplies. This supply comes as we increase the size of our pipelines and our, and our, our supply chains. 
this supply might not always be easy to stretch, but the fruit of it is exponential. So first thing we're going to do, would we begin to focus on the God who is our supplier? And my God shall supply all your needs. Come on, begin to give God thanks for the, su- the supplying of your, your needs. Come on, let's begin to praise Him and begin to exalt Him and begin to magnify Him and begin to glorify Him. Oh, I give you praise, God, that you are a big God. You're a powerful God. And I worship you today and I praise you. Come on, that's it. Lift your voices. Let, get up on your feet and begin to lift your hands and begin to clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Yes, God, we praise praise you today. We give you glory and we give you honour. You are the God who supplies. But we thank you that we have grace, our merited favour that will take us from glory to glory, from breakthrough to breakthrough, from healing to healing. Ah, we give you praise today. We thank you, God, what you're doing in our lives. We give you praise, God. We exalt you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. So we thank Him. We come and recognise His supply chain originates at the throne of God. In Acts chapter 2, they were in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon them. Where was the Holy Spirit sent from? He was sent from the Godhead, third part of the Trinity, came upon them. He wants to come upon you now. Would you lift your hands to heaven? My grandfather would get up in the morning. He was a revivalist brought the baptism of the Holy Spirit to nations of the world. And he would get up in the morning and take a deep breath and he'd breathe in and, and he'd go, I re- receive you. Just as he was taking a breath for oxygen, he would say, God, you become my breath. I receive you, Holy Spirit. Would you lift your hands to heaven? And would you breathe in on the count of three by faith? Say, I receive you, Holy Spirit. Here we go. One. Two, three. I receive you, Holy Spirit. Receive him right now. Receive him right here, right now. The next thing we're going to do, if you've got things in your heart, in your arteries, your spiritual arteries, in your life, in your supply chains that are blocking or minimizing the flow of supply. Peace, joy, love, resource. Supply is not just money. Supply is power. Supply is freedom. Supply is joy. Supply is love. But you have blockages. Maybe unforgiveness, maybe hurt, maybe Unbelief, maybe confusion, maybe independence, whatever. Why don't you right now say, Jesus, forgive me. I come out of agreement with that lie. I come out of agreement with that situation. I forgive. I, I release. I now come and cleanse me. Come and and fill me. Come and remove all the blockages. I give them to you. I give my heart to you to let you do surgery on me so my flow is not inhibited, but is it filled with you and choose to have the right diet. Now, all the things that you are needing and you're believing for, As a church, whether it's facilities or more leaders or whatever, resources, whatever. And as individuals, what I want us to do right now is do Philippians 4, 4 to 6. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And then 
then be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Let's bring our supplication with thanksgiving. Let our request be known to God. So re- ready, here we go. So would you just for the next 30 seconds, next 45 seconds, whatever, begin to thank Him for what He's about to do. Begin to thank Him for the freedom He's going to release in and the resource He's going to release and begin to thank Him for the love He's going to release in your life. Begin to thank Him for the restoration. Begin to thank Him. That's it. I begin to thank you God for my provision I thank you for my healing I thank you for jobs I thank you for buildings I I thank you for resources I I thank you for my family knowing you I thank you God that that you're going to supply all all my needs according to your riches and glory so I come before you with my supplication and I thank you God for my children I thank you God for my future I thank you God for everything I thank you that we as, as Freedom Christian Center I'm marching forward. I thank you for resources and buildings and leaders. And and there'll be no lack in in any person that is a part of Freedom Christian Centre. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for for transformation of cities and nations. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I give you thanks, Jesus. I come with supplication. I come with supplication. Thank you, Lord. That's so good. Now, the Bible says every joint supplies. If there's someone in your house, would you put your hand upon their shoulder? But if there's no one in your house, would you stretch your hands as like you're stretching out to the rest of the body, like you're, you're actually in a, in a venue, wherever you are, or whether you're in a venue, I don't know where you are right now as I'm speaking to you. But would you say, God, let, let me be, Let me be a person. I want to be not dislocated. I want to be located. I want to be planted. I want to be connected. I I want to let what I have flow into the next person, what they have flow into me. And so if you've been dislocated, say, God, I'm sorry for that. I'm going to locate my heart. You know, you can be dislocated in your heart, but still attend something. I'm not talking about attendance. Attendance will be backed up by your location. But if you're dislocated and your heart is not being in the flow, say, God, let my heart come into location. Let it become each joint supplies because Lord, I love you with all my heart and I love my my brothers and sisters. And so let the blessing I carry bless them and let the blessing they carry bless me. So we can, one can put a thousand a flight, two can put 10,000 a flight. So do that right now. Thank you, Lord. That's it. Pray for them for the next 30 seconds. Pray for your church for the next 30 seconds. So so we're going to do this together. Where there's unity, God commands a blessing. Each joint supplies. Thank you, Lord. 15 more seconds. That's it. Come on. Come on, come on. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of victory there in California. I can hear the sound of victory. Each joint supplies. Amen. Let's give Him praise for that. Amen. Now, this is what I want us to do. Just like you're stretching. I want you to do this like, say, God, I'm, I'm going to stretch out. I'm, I, this, this is a season not for minimising. It's for maximum. I'm going to increase my tent. I'm going to live in a mindset of blessing and freedom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase. So increase us now, Lord. Stretch us. Stretch your arms out like you're, you're, you're stretching out. And then begin to walk wherever you are and say, God, I, I walk around wherever you are and say, whoever my foot treads is my inheritance. When you're walking out in the streets today, say, everywhere I step is my inheritance. As you begin, say, so we're stretching out. We're stepping in a new season. We're stepping in a new level. We're going to a whole nother level. We're going to increase the size of our pipes and our piping systems. We're going to increase the size of what we're doing. We're increasing the supply chains. We're increasing everything we do. This is not a season to decrease. It's a season to increase. So here I am, Lord. Everything I have is Yours. And I'm going to take steps of faith to see breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Hallelujah. In the Name of Jesus. And now, I want us to thank God that He's going to give us a spirit that's so determined for expansion that the fruit will be exponential. 
Let me pray for you. Father, right now, every person hearing the sound of my voice, even in a stretching season, as we stretch out, and stretching isn't always easy, but as we stretch and as we increase, and as we increase the size of the flow of blessing, it's exciting, but it's not always easy. But I thank You, the fruit of what is happening right now at Freedom Christian Centre will literally set up the next 10 years of what God's going to do in the, in the state of California, in the city of Los Angeles and beyond. I declare exponential growth. I, de- I declare exponential growth. I declare, Father, in Your Name, every person, every business, every family, every uh, the church corporately will exponentially grow as we stretch in faith. Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.